Hello children, a big warm welcome to our very own channel, Ammu and You, where I am Ammu and I am ever ready with lovely, lovely stories to narrate to you. Today the story I have is named Chini. It's been written by Surekha Panandikar. Chini will be on my side. No, I asked her first. She'll be in my group. Neither Radha nor Vimal would give in. Chimi was very good at Langri Tang, the hopping game. Everyone wanted Chimi to be on their side. She was in a fix. She did not want to annoy anyone. Chimi was a poor orphan. Nobody knew where she had come from. Yet everyone accepted the frail tea girl and named her Chimi, the little sparrow. She obliged one and all by doing odd jobs for them, fetched vegetables from the corner shop or looked after babies when their mothers went shopping. If the maid didn't turn up, Chimi was there to help, cleaning vessels, sweeping the floor and so on and on. Chimi lived on leftovers women in the neighborhood gave her. The girls of her age gave her their discarded clothes. Everybody liked Chimi except Parvati Kaki. Now Kaki, we address an aunt. She considered herself to be a pious and aristocratic woman. She had a big house with a beautiful garden full of jasmines and roses. But nobody was ever allowed in. The flowers were meant for puja only. Worshipping God? Little girls who loved flowers envied her but were too scared to go to her garden. Chimi, according to Parvati Kaki, belonged to a low caste. Therefore, she looked down on the girls who played with her. She would not allow Chimi into her house even on Ganesh Chaturthi the day of the big puja, when the world worships Lord Ganesh. Parvati Kaki's house was almost like a mansion built in traditional style with big wooden carved doors, huge halls and chandeliers. Full-sized mirrors and paintings decorated the walls. Even the pillars had beautiful pictures painted on them. Surprisingly, the windows, especially of the rooms, were very small. They were decorated with beads and zari curtains and hangings. It was said that Kaki really loved rich decorations and her ancestors were related to the great Peshwas who had ruled Maharashtra during the 18th and 19th century. The outhouses and surrounding houses, which also belonged to Parvati Kaki, were rented out. In the big house, Parvati Kaki lived with her son, Vinaya, his wife, Gauri, and her chubby little grandson, Chotu. Chotu was a great favorite with the girls. Gauri, Bhabi, as Chotu's mother was called, was a very nice, educated lady and didn't mind Chotu being carried by others. Many people mind their babies being carried by others, you know, children. Parvati Kaki, however, kept vigil like a watchdog and never allowed Chimi to touch Chotu. Chimi had to be satisfied with cooing to Chotu from a distance. How she wished she could play with him. She loved everyone so much. Every year during the monsoons, the river Mutha near Pune gets flooded. People gather to watch the flood waters. That year, when the level of the water rose, no one bothered. It was a Saturday and the children had gone to school. The women folk were busy in the kitchen making special dishes for the weekend. The men were in their offices and factories working. Suddenly, 
news came that Panshet Dam had given way and the waters of the Mutha River had entered the city. Children were asked to rush home. Shanwar Pet, where Chimi and her friends lived, and other areas on the riverbanks were in danger of being flooded. At first, the water was just knee deep, but it rose fast. People living on the ground floors were shifted to places of safety. Those who lived in two or three story flats climbed to the top. There was confusion everywhere. Police vans were trying to help, people running helter skelter. Vinay, Parvati Kaki's son, had gone to Bombay on business. Parvati Kaki and Gauri Bhabi were on the ground floor. When water entered their house, Parvati Kaki was in the puja room, the room where she worshipped, and Gauri Bhabi in the kitchen. Within seconds, the water rose. The police persuaded Parvati Kaki and Gauri Bhabi to climb to the top floor. In the hurry and confusion, they forgot that Chotu was sleeping on the first floor. The staircases were all flooded. It was impossible to get to the bedroom on the first floor. Though the door to the room was closed, it was not bolted. Any moment the water would rush in. The women were panicky. Chotu, they wailed. What will happen to our Chotu? Suddenly the police discovered that one of the bedroom windows was open. But it was too small for an adult to crawl in. You know children, Parvati Kaki had big rooms with small windows. Only a child could get in. But no one was willing to let their children take the risk. Out of nowhere, Chimi emerged. Let me help. I can easily crawl in and get Chotu out, she offered. There was no time to waste. The policemen lowered Chimi to the window. Jump, they told her. We will drop you a rope ladder through the window so that you can get out. Without a moment's hesitation, Chimi jumped through the window. Chotu was sleeping soundly. Picking him up, Chimi put him on her back and tied him tight to herself with a bed sheet. How brave Chimi was. Slowly she climbed the ladder and peeped through the window. Carefully she undid the bed sheet and handed it with the child to a policeman. Then she crawled out of the window. Both Chimi and Chotu were taken to the second floor where Parvati Kaki, Gauri Bhabi and others were watching. Chotu, who was up by now, saw so many people around that he burst out crying. Cheers greeted Chimi. Gauri Bhabi hugged Chimi while Parvati Kaki fondled her grandson. Chimi did not know what all this fuss was about. Come here, Chimi, Parvati Kaki called her. Chimi hesitated, but Parvati Kaki almost dragged Chimi to her and hugged her. Beti Chimi, my little girl, she said, you have shown that it is courage and humanity that counts, not your caste or position. I have learned my lesson, my child. After two days, the flood water began to recede. As soon as life returned to normal in Pune, the police inspector of the locality met Chimi and asked her what reward she would like to have for her bravery. The entire neighborhood was there. To everyone's surprise, Chimi said, I have already got the reward. An opportunity to play with Chotu. She paused for a while and added, I should like to go to school if you can help me. The inspector was helpless. What a lovely heart this girl had, he thought. But Vinayak Bhabi came forward and said, We'll bear the expenses of Chimi's schooling. She can stay with us as long as she wants. Chimi was delighted. At last she had a place to stay and little Chotu to play with too. Radha and Vimal were still fighting. Chimi comes to my school, cried Radha. Oh, 
that dilapidated third-rate school of yours, retorted Vimal. She should be admitted to my school, the best in Pune. But Chini couldn't be bothered. Any school was good enough for her. She had Chotu all to herself and was busy playing with her. What a lovely little girl Chini was. No children? So what did we learn? We learned that caste, position, rich, poor, does not matter. What matters then? A good heart, a loving heart, a heart that is ready to help anytime, anyone. Think about it, children, and try to be like Chini. If you've liked the story, then you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. Press the bell icon to be updated on the channel all the new videos and yes send me your comments how you like the story i love to get them thank you so much children for listening to the story i'll come soon again till then stay safe stay blessed and be loving bye bye